We're getting close to 400,000 miles. Is it worth fixing this thing? Let's find out. Let's get started. Okay, wizard, wizard, we just hit a million subscribers. Really? Yeah. I knew it was coming, but it came soon. It, yeah, it was supposed to like predicted in April, but it happened. All right, that's amazing. Thanks to you guys. Yeah, for sure. You guys are awesome. We wouldn't be able to do it without you, obviously, so really appreciate that. Actually, we have a video in the works when we finally did hit a million subscribers. We're working on next week. You guys will get to see it. I actually have a gift planned for you. Whoa, for me? Yes. I'm nervous, guys. He's, he makes some crazy decisions sometimes. So we're gonna reminisce on old times here at Omega, and we're gonna give a really cool gift to Mrs. Wizard. So you oh. definitely wanna, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because we're going to do that video next week. It's gonna be a really good video. But anyways, back to this old girl. Yeah, she looks special. It is an old, old car. So we hit a million subscribers, and this thing's halfway to a million miles. It, it literally almost is. Customer dropped this off. They're kind of at the teetering point of how much money do I want to put into this thing versus should I start looking for another vehicle? They had quite a list of complaints and most of them were just annoying problems, things that weren't safety concerns or, or anything. It actually drives pretty well. We're gonna take a look at this thing and show you. It's like 388,000 miles, 380, somewhere around in there. We'll have to look and Mrs. Wizard will show you guys the exact number, but. It's got some rust, got some issues. We're gonna find out why is it here and is it worth putting any money into it or how much money is worth putting into it. Let's discover that together today. So let's go ahead and take a look around it. So here's the face of this nice 1992 Honda Accord. I can remember being younger and these things were everywhere. Do you remember Mrs. Wizard? Oh yeah, they were quite popular in their day. Literally million. I mean, they were all over the road. As we go down the side, you can see some rusty lug nuts there on the wheels, but as we get to the back portion, you can see in the door corners and also along the door in the wheel well, there's a lot of rust building up on this old Honda. We can see some ceiling repairs have been attempted sometime in the distant past with just silicone. They went around all of the rear window. Maybe there were some air leaks or something going on. There's a Brigham Young University Zone Y parking decal there. We can see that this is the Accord LX. It is the four cylinder, it's not a V6. And again, we see more rust going on back here along the arch. But the rest of the car is actually not so bad. It's not beat up, not dinged up, not caved in or anything. For the amount of miles, it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and open the hood. Here's our 2.2 liter four cylinder. And as you can see, it's not coated in oil. You can see somebody's been in here recently and did some work on it. And I think that's accurate because over on the left, we see here, the timing belt was done at 356,300 miles. And it's only got around 380, so it was recently done. Otherwise, everything looks clean under the hood. I don't see anything damaged or leaking or causing any issues. It really looks pretty good for 380,000 miles. Let's go ahead and let Mrs. Wizard show you guys around the interior and see what has all these miles done to the interior. Okay, ladies, gents, you are going to be impressed. 380,875 and two tenths miles. And look at the gauge cluster. Very easy to read, very simple, and very analog. It's 1992. We don't have too many digital dashes of that era. There are some, but look at this dash. 380,000 miles. No cracks, hardly any dust. It's in really, really good shape. I'm very, very flabbergasted how nice it is. Our HVAC are easy to use, very easy to uh, you know, control, just put very simple push buttons, and even, nothing is even more off. Like extra fingernails may have scratched them sometimes. Nope. All of them are in great condition. We do have, it looks like a new stereo has been installed and we have our, at that time would have been a cigarette lighter because we didn't have charge ports then. And of course there's the ashtray with a straw wrapper. Even this, it says push. We do have to help it out a little bit, but there is our drink tray. Still working, still doing a great job. And push it in, it has a little bit of dust on it, but otherwise it's working quite well. 
This here is what makes this car the most fun. It's a five-speed manual transmission, so with this little car going, it could be so much fun to drive. And one of the reasons probably why it's lasted so long with that manual transmission. Our seats are cloth, and they do have a little bit of bolster on the side, and you can tell that they do have a little bit of marking on them, a little bit of staining from things being dripped on them, and the camera always shows things far worse than it is in real life. So you're seeing far more dirt and drops than we really see with the regular eye. But are there any holes? No. The fuzz is all still on the seat where it's supposed to be, and it's just the same here on the driver's seat. Not wore off anywhere. Have a few marks on our door card there from especially where you would maybe grab the door with something on your hand. But again, the door handle is still attached. It's not flopping. The little plastic there where our map holder is is still in one piece, not falling apart. Absolutely amazing. Look at this back seat. It's in great condition. I really wonder if there were too many kids who did sit back there because it doesn't look like it was used a whole lot. Being that we saw a Brigham Young University sticker in the back from I think it said 97, that this would be a college kid car. So not too many people were riding around in here. Headliner. I've seen headliners look far worse than this in much newer cars. Here we are at the steering wheel. Got our lovely Honda embossed logo on the center section. Simple controls here on the side is all we have for our cruise control and that is it. Again, it's 1992. We don't have buttons for everything else under the sun on our steering wheel. It's just keeping it simple. <sighs> Sometimes I wish those days were back. Simple life. But nonetheless, why is this here and what's wrong with it and how has it lasted for 380,000 miles? Let's get this thing up in the air. So I've actually looked underneath already and for as many miles I was expecting some severe carnage, severe rust, major damage. I was like, this thing is going to be clapped out. And it's not. It's a Honda. There is some little bit of seepage going on here. It's a tiny little bit, maybe a rear main seal, but I wouldn't even mess with that at this stage in life on this car. And very likely it could be, as we can see, the oil pan gasket's been replaced at some point in the past and it's a little bit seepage. I might be able to tighten up the bolts on it and solve that. We can see here it has new CV axles. The front brakes are about 30% remaining. They're still good. Sway bar links are good. Over on the other side, it also has a new CV shaft. Sway bar link is good. Brakes are about the same. It's a little rusty crusty, but it's not too bad, really. Everything looks good there. And being that it's front-wheel drive from the 90s, that's pretty much the extent of the mechanicals of the car for the most part. I was expecting the exhaust to be completely rusted out as well, but it's actually not too bad. Here's our catalytic converter. Goes back to the exhaust back there. It's a little rusty, but nothing that it's an issue. It needs to be replaced. Here's our fuel tank. Everything's looking good there. Let's take a look at these back brakes and wheels. Yeah, those are getting a little thin on the back. The rotors are crusty too. Rusted really bad. You see that the rear strut is not leaking or anything. The bushing is a little bit cracked, but it's nothing that's really worthy of tearing it apart. Everything looks good there. We see that the dust shield has been bent up at some point in the past. Brakes are still thin there. We got a very rusty, crusty rotor. So that's definitely making some noise. Strut is good. Sway bar link is a little bit loose. We'll see what the customer wants to do. Otherwise, it's a lot better than I expected. Let's take a look at the tire date code. So the lug nuts are rusty. The wheel covers are gone. Who knows where they went, but the tires are fairly new. 46th week of 2022 on all four. So they're only a couple years old. They're still good. Let's get this thing on the ground. So how far do you go with a car like this? The customer's complaining of a little small rattle inside the driver's door. 
a tiny pop like once in a while in the front end, like a spring pop or something. It doesn't happen all the time, it's just occasionally on a turn. A tiny little bit of rattle in the back, maybe that's the sway bar links. And then the brakes do make a grinding noise when you're braking. I have road tested it. And that explains why we see thin pads and a crusty, rusty rear rotors. That's the noise coming from there. There's a lot of other little small complaints or things. And then at the bottom of the complaint list, the customer asks, I just want to know, is this car even worth fixing any of these things? So we have contacted the customer. And Crazy D got a hold of them and said, this is what we found. The brakes in the rear should be addressed. That would take care of the grinding noise. It will make it safe again. But the rest of the issues you have are just kind of annoyances. But at 380,000 miles, it runs great. It drives great. There's no reason to sink three and four and five thousand dollars into this car going from front to rear. It's got bad rust developing on the body. This is a car, you fix the safety concerns, you keep it running and driving good enough, you leave the rest alone. Because by the time you sink all the money into this thing to get every little tiny little nitpicking thing fixed, you can go buy another Accord that's said this year that's nice with half the miles. The customer said even with just the recommendation of the brakes and maybe just to do some small things, they're going to talk with their wife and see it may be time they just don't even want to put a hundred dollars into this thing. They're just kind of at the teetering point. They may just go ahead and sell this car off and go purchase another car. And we agreed with that, said maybe it's time. You will have to decide that on your own, but as far as fixing all the little annoyances, I don't recommend it, but we definitely do recommend fixing the brakes. Some of the things to consider if you're in this situation as well is how far do you drive the car? If you have a 100-mile commute every day, probably time to look for another car due to the mileage. Anything could fail at any time at this point in its life. Also, what kind of conditions, the driving conditions, the roads you drive on, are they dirt roads, are they paved roads, things of that nature. The other thing to think about is how often do they drive? If it's two or three times a week, this will be a great car. If it's seven days a week, maybe not. Those are things you'll have to decide, but those are some definite variables to kind of put into the equation when you're coming up with the yes or the no answer on putting a bunch of money into this car. I've seen these scenarios over the years. Customers have the same questions. I always advise just to fix the safety concerns, some of the major issues. Keep it rolling as long as it can, but ultimately this car doesn't have two or three hundred thousand miles left on it due to the rust things just going on. It could go another 50. It wouldn't be a car that would drive long distances with. So is this thing ready for the scrapper going to the salvage yard? No, it still has some life left in it. This would be a perfect high school car where a kid drives two miles to school and two miles home, maybe a few miles on the weekend, go hang out with friends. But it's not ready for the scrapper, but it's not to the point where this is your family car that you rely on, that if you break down, you could lose your job, or you could be stranded on the side of the road, it's really cold out and your children are freezing. That's probably not the car for that. It kind of reminds me, we actually just had an Audi in here, a 2018 A4 Audi, where they had been at a dealership and they said, your motor mounts are destroyed, they're on the brink of failure, you could get injured. Uh, you need to get this replaced right away. It's going to be some odd thousand dollars or something. And they brought it to us, and there's nothing wrong with the motor mounts. They are the electronic motor mounts. They have actually connectors on them. We scan for codes. There are no codes. Everything's within normal parameters. We kind of test them visually and also jacked up the engine a little bit to see if they're torn. They're fine. They were just drumming up business. We actually thought about filming the Audi today, but the customer needs their car back right now, like yesterday. So that didn't work out, unfortunately. But I definitely wanted to share the little story with you guys. That could be done here if we wanted to. We go, oh yeah, you need this and this and this and this and this and this, and it's going to be $3,800. You got to do it or you're going to crash. We don't play that game here. We're going to fix the brakes. The rest of the car will go a long time. Uh, it's still got some life left in it, and that's what we recommended. So again, thanks to you guys for helping us reach a million subscribers. 
We together are now officially a 1 million subscriber channel. That is really, really cool. It's, it's really an achievement. It's a lifetime achievement, and I really appreciate the help from you guys. Don't forget, there is a video in the works. We're going to finish it up, wrap it up, and next week you guys will get to view it, and Mrs. Wizard will receive her special million subscriber gift. Also, if you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to work on this Honda, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description. If you purchase anything, we get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget about hitting the subscribe button with Mrs. Wizard's Ways. She's got really good content there. She's putting out new videos recently. You guys want to go check those out. We made it to a million, guys. Thanks for the help. Thanks for watching.